All right, we're back here at New Rage Gaming. Thanks for sticking around. Looks like the show was well in hands without me so far this weekend, but I'm back to take down the rest of the weekend with Mason Clark. And we're watching Pioneer, and I step away for a day and a half, and you guys let Angels in the top eight. <laughs> what is going on? Angels is great. We were talking about it a little bit, you know, in the last round. The deck kind of has a really good metagame position if you can avoid that Rakdos matchup. And we were seeing about 20% of the room today was on mono green, so it was the perfect day to pull out Angels. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, that player is all set. We're going to start this round with Noah Strassler and George Jabour. Players who or viewers who normally watch the Rage series could probably, in the dark, without knowing the format, into it that George Jabour is probably playing Narsa Days and doing, and they'd be correct <laughs> again. Here he is facing Norse Strassler with Mono Green Ramp. Yeah, the you know, the Mono Green Ramp has been the menace of the format and everything, but these control decks. They have tried and tried again to fix the matchup and try to get to a spot where they can actually win. And sometimes Days I'm doing a Narset does actually do that job well enough. Yeah, yeah, it definitely can. Unfortunately, here for George, Narset on its own, like there's not really much card drawing. I mean, I guess there's Kiora, but really, other than that, Narset's not going to mean much here, right? Yeah, Narset is it's more of a combo piece. It's a lot more like your Splinter Twin than it is your Deceiver Exarch like normal. And so we're, you know, going to have to have that lined up well for us. Yeah, okay. So Noah starts developing here. We see Kiora in hand. We see a lot of mana generation. So there is some risk. We see temporary lockdown in some of these blue-white control decks. I don't know the numbers in George's list this weekend, but that it is... It looks like we have two. Okay, so that is a risk for Noah, because not only will that gobble up the elves, it will take the Wolf of Haven as well, which is unpleasant as Kiora gets added to the hand. And yeah, okay, so triple ramping here. Uh, that's either great or really vulnerable. Yep. And you have to imagine George's, you know, experience in this matchup. Not only, like you mentioned, we see him on the tour all the time playing these blue eye control decks, but also four and one today. There's no way George at all this way without beating up some modern green players. Yeah, that is probably true. Hard to get through any number of rounds otherwise. So, okay, let's see. Here we go. Turn three and he's got a temporary lockdown. That is going to wipe out everything Noah's got. I mean, he doesn't mind losing the oath, but everything else is kind of painful. Yeah. Noah Strassler is begging to draw besage you but oh dang that is a backbreaking play there on temporary lockdown yeah okay so here no stressor on turn three has a choice of old growth troll or kiora at least with kiora first how do you feel about that i think it's pretty good for setting up when you've lost all your resources like that you maybe need to get a little bit more cards or are light on lands here for noah and so by doing this we can set up to play old growth troll get a couple extra cards and hopefully hit the land drops that we need and we also don't expose our old growth troll to something like march of otherworldly light which would be a backbreaking turn sequence mm -hmm. this way we at least get some value out of it as long as there aren't too many counter spells from george yeah so the troll gets absorbed we see noah there uh using cura just to play around sensor which I mean, do we ever see Cure run out of loyalty? Does it ever <laughs> yeah. happen? O only when you're comboing and you're doing it on purpose. You know, she right. has a million loyalty. <laughs> yeah. So Teferi gets dropped here for George. Looking great here, developing. Able to untap a couple lands. So with Absorb down for the turn, I guess Noah could resolve a creature here if he's got something good. But this is, this is getting away from him. Yeah, and we see Noah once again respecting the sensor really hard here. And it looks like it is going to finally be that Old Growth Troll getting cast yeah all right so second try with troll that one's gonna resolve that looks like yeah it looks like looks like there may be some respond to the trigger yeah. on the stack but okay never mind so let it happen all right so at least something positive ha happening for noah strassler uh although him getting draw one card you know it's a one-time thing teferi's just gonna do that every single turn and it's hard to keep up with yeah, Teferi is a card that we've seen in basically every format that when it sticks, it wins the game if you can protect it. And that's what George Shabor has built the whole deck around, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick this and win. Yeah, definitely a Planeswalker heavy version of the deck. And is he contemplating a minus here? He might be. Yeah. It, uh I kind of like it. It's a really good play around uh, Nykthos, which is a card that maybe you're kind of afraid of. And also, you know, your Teferi is going to get hit anyways. And so maybe this has helped setting up something like the Narsa into days and doing by removing the pressure on the board too for a future turn. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Noah knows that that troll is waiting. And with Storm the Festival in hand, if he can get that off before two turns from now, he actually knows he's got a guaranteed hit. I'm not sure that's the most desirable card, but it's, I guess, nice to know. 
And here's yeah. an elf. And okay, you know, elf, hopefully you need the mana because attacking for one's not going to be so great when George is at 23. 100%. And it, it is awkward too because Noah has drawn the Besage you. So we can Besage the lockdown and get our mana back and kind of surprise George. Mm -hmm. So if George goes for like, the, you know, maybe a big memory deluge or something like that, you know, uses all the mana in some way, that could be a huge punish. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're going to see a castle scry here. Castle Vantress is finally getting activated on the coverage. We've had it a lot this weekend, Joe, and it has not been activated. So this is exciting for me. I heard, I heard your like intake of breath there, and I didn't know what the, I didn't know what was going on. But uh, okay, there we are. So it's explained. Castle Vantress. Yep, oh. double bottom. Now I see why you had Lonely Sandbar in our deck. Finally, it makes sense. I get it now. All right, Teferi does its thing. Pick up a card. Yeah, it looks like George is just drawing a lot of lands, even with the help of Castle Vantress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I mean he, he may well have sweepers in the hand that he's just not going to bother casting against an elf. Mm -hmm. uh, and here's Narset. Okay, is there a follow up? Yeah, let's see. We do get to minus. Look at the top four. Looks like there's at least a Dovin's Veto in the pile, which is not the worst in the world. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is the veto. So the Bosechu on the lockdown actually more relevant here potentially for attackers on the Planeswalkers than it is for mana generation. But we'll see how this goes. Also, the Oath will come back, and that's nice. Yeah, you know you're going to hit at least an Old Growth Troll. Yeah. And yeah, you got a lot of mana. You might be even, can maybe even double spell through everything. So George can take a second, double check. Joe, I have to imagine you've been in this spot a lot because, you know, you play a lot of the control decks and legacy and other formats. Mm -hmm. How often is it to, hard to, like, navigate these spots where you're kind of just heavy on these cards that generate cards, but you're kind of having to line up your spells in awkward ways? I mean, it's it, it may be somewhat awkward, but you're also looking at it from knowing that you're in a position of real advantage here. I mean, even if your Planeswalkers get picked off, all you have to worry about, really, the only way you're going to die is if you get comboed out, and you know Dovin's Veto has that covered. So, I mean, there's some stuff to think about, but you have you have so many tools in this format. You have Wandering Emperor, which I never got to play with back <laughs> in the older formats, and uh, I mean that's a nice that's a nice tool. You can do all kinds of work with it. And I mean, how much with no Nykthos, How much mana are we really looking at here? Probably something like eight, one, two, four, five, six, seven, maybe nine with Kiora. That's yeah, you know, ten. That's bad. handleable, yeah. Yeah, especially because everything costs so much, right? It's not like we have 10 mana and a bunch of 3 drops, you know? Yeah. We're trying to resolve 6 mana cards here. We did All pick right. up Karn, though, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which I think is... that's kind of the, the big key player in this matchup, by the way. Yeah. Where it is a card that if you stick, you can't really answer unless you use something like Deferi Minusing. Cards like Farewell or how you see the blue-white players sort of take over these games when they sort of fall behind. And we see George is rocking one this weekend in the main deck. Uh, but a card like Karn is really just almost impossible to kill. Yeah, but it's also currently impossible to resolve. And Noah's thinking this through. He's got a couple desirable cards in hand, but he knows he can probably only cast one a turn and... Yeah, so he's just, he's got to set up, he's got to plan multiple turns in advance here because he knows he's not going to win the game this turn. 100%. I wonder if we might see something like an activation of Lair of the Hydra and just send everything at Hero and, you know, maybe like one or two of them at Narset so you can't mm -hmm. minus for free and just kind of be like, all right, tap out, do what you do your best, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's depending on how desperate Noah feels his position is, that may be the way to go. There's obviously ways you can get blown to shreds on that play, but. Sometimes it's worthwhile. More mana being assembled here. And yeah, it looks like we're flicking a cure to the front. Maybe yeah. trying to use cure as some bait. Maybe that that would be questionable as there's already a cure in play. But yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, so it is going to be an animation. So you called that one. Lair of the Hydra is up and ready to rumble. Yeah. And it looks, yeah, it's going to be a 2 2 layer of the Hydra. It's always one less than what you pay for it. Looks like Noah's eyeing it up and just like, yeah, whatever. Okay, 3 3. Okay, that makes more sense, certainly, as now he can threaten both planeswalkers if, if that's the way he chooses to go. Yeah, and 
worth mentioning too because of cure we haven't activated yet with wolf Willow. if george tries to do something like memory deluge into a spot level spell to save one of these walkers uh mm -hmm. noah can still play karn and get underneath that veto so kind of getting trying to get george to blink here and if it goes it will be bad mm -hmm. all right so four attackers coming across here George DeBoer left to decide. Well, okay, Noah's still considering how he wants to line this up, it looks like. Not committed on three damage each way. Yeah, there's some amount of, like, maybe I just have to kill this Teferi. Maybe uh -huh. I have to kill this Narset. And so, just trying to figure that out exactly. Because, you know, a card like March of Otherworldly Light, which is pretty popular in these decks, does just beat your Lair of the Hydro. Okay, let's see it. The decision has been made, and George Abour, it's on you to respond. And the response wasn't instant, so that's going to be good for Noah. Well, okay. Otherwise, uh, uh, reset the layer of the Hydra. I that think it does work. It does it's work. Not, not non land. Oh, interesting. I guess it just made it so it targets all the types, but it doesn't say mm -hmm. not non land. Makes sense. Right. So, All right, so yeah, Narset goes down, and fortunately, Noah can replay the lair as he didn't play the land yet. So, that's that's something that turn wasn't terrible. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that went way better than I thought it was could have yeah. gone. <laughs> it looked like we were having a moment where we we're gonna actually do the deluge into something and maybe have you know lost the game not on the spot but fallen very far behind in the spot where we were kind of in a commanding position. Mm -hmm. And it looks like yeah, you were right. George was holding on to that verdict. Didn't really care about the one elf before. Yeah, but three. Three is a good price. And able to reset with castle mana activation oh. or any number of other things. Wow. We might have two activations in one round. Joe, you really... <laughs> things change when you're around. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. I See, I wouldn't... If, yeah, without I wouldn't have even known that castle activation was, was a noteworthy thing, but but I guess it is. I would have thought angels being on camera was a bigger deal. Both are big deals to me. Yeah. I have small dreams, you know, <laughs> as, as we see the layer of the hydro here before. Looks like. Yeah, there's the march you're talking about. Layers out of here. And okay. No, it's on you. How about <gasps> second one? <laughs> That's so much card advantage. <laughs> We're up so much. Look. <laughs> two to the bottom the first time. That's almost as good as drawing a card. One to the bottom this time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're Noah, you hate to see the one on top. Yeah. All right. So George will draw another card and consider his options here. I mean, we're now we're well at the point where he can hold up counters and do fairly significant things okay main phase castle that is not what i had in mind by main phase you know powerful things but all right yeah it's hard to qualify it as powerful in general but it is a thing we were able to do yeah and i we put one on top again so i don't know if Noah doesn't do anything george might scry again you know how it is with top you get to look again again you do, yeah you do <laughs> i mean the, 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 yeah that's that's the that's the fun play that other players love when you look at three and then look at three again without anything changing and mm -hmm. just leave them like, oh i just was checking all right so mm -hmm. Noah drew nykthos finally so maybe he can get a little more mana online and the troll does draw a card now that the narset is gone yeah seven devotions a lot of mana Okay, so here we go. Counting it up, verifying. It is indeed seven, like you said. So do we do we feel does it even matter storm or karn here? I think you want to lead on storm just because it is flashbackable. Now 10 mana is a ton of mana, yeah. but it's something that at least like we're not hard losing it. And with Karn, we can maybe set up a double Karn turn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, we still have Cure of Activation to go, so there's even more mana available. Yeah, so now we choose to activate Nykthos again, it'll be up to 12 mana, which would allow us to double spell. All right, here's five for Wolf Willow Haven. This feels like it maybe could have come down before the... Uh... 
No, no, it couldn't come down before the first Nick though, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, I think Noah did the those double checking that day, yeah, just yeah. making sure. And uh, you know, the Willful uh, now will make one when we activate Nick those because the land's been tapped to make mana, and then now we get an additional mana. Uh so yeah, we should still be at 12 since it kind of is mana neutral in this exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this does allow so now we know that we're playing two spells. We have Karn and Storm the Festival. Storm the Vessel still goes first, does mean to veto. Yep. And this is the bite. Noah set this up. Will it resolve if he chooses to go for it? Karn is big. Oh, second veto. Okay. So that did obviously deplete a lot of George's resources here, but Teferi's still in play. And like you said, I believe we kept the scry cards. So. Yeah. And <laughs> are we going to see another minus from uh, Teferi? We saw it do it before on the old gross troll. Yeah, yeah, there's two, four, six, seven. Yeah, you know, quite a bit of mana available even without the troll. And George is going to draw. Mm -hmm. Maybe wondering how, how did this? I was in great shape. I had Teferi, I had Narset, <laughs> I had Counter Magic, and, and now, like, you have stuff on the board. Well, you don't have stuff on the board now. <laughs> Farewell to those things, though. Yeah, this is kind of the power of the green machine. It just mm -hmm. continuously churns out. And but despite being a green ramp deck, it just honestly never stops producing card advantage and just keeps chugging and chugging and chugging all right well that was certainly a blow for no strassler now and then here's another another narset and the storm festival no longer available to flashback as farewell like you said it's a one of but it's a very powerful card Cleans yeah up and a lot it is a card that when Mono Green was first in the Uprise, Blue Eye players were like, oh, we'll just stick a bunch of these in our deck and fix the matchup. Problem there, of course, was you know, other decks in the format like Mono White. They really punished the six mana sweeper versus a four mana sweeper. But you still see, you know, a copy in the main, and we'll get to it later, but in the sideboard as well for George, kind of having the tools for this matchup very aware. I'm going to have to beat Mono Green three or four times to win a big tournament like this. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Noah, no play yuck that's kind of you know all systems that go here if you're george you're mm -hmm. just about to ultimate your teferi and your opponent did nothing yeah yep yeah, sounds good although yeah maybe noah's just trying to bait him into casting well he's not going to bother all right we're out of here let's go to the next game <laughs> as georgia board will pick up game one here with his uh no days undoing showed up and narset maybe didn't play that significant of a role but certainly the sweepers mm. we saw the whole bevy of lockdown verdict and farewell that game all right let's look at some sideboards so no stress or down a game got some work to do and so you're playing mono green pioneer you're playing against blue eye control you've obviously got a bunch of great cyborg cards right <laughs> well you have 15 one of wish cards so you could bring in a Seekus Chariot. That is one that sometimes does come in in these grinding matchups. You see Lovestruck Beast in here for Noah. Kind of a card to beat up on the aggro decks. Totally passable in this matchup, but you might see something like that or maybe like, an, honestly, a Llanowar Elf get exchanged for a Seekus Chariot. It was something you'll see some players choose to do. No mm. real consensus among the green players are exactly what you're supposed to do, but besides that, no, you kind of just want to wish for him, unfortunately. No real sideboard yeah. in this uh, most popular deck in Pioneer. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and shift over to Mr. Jabour's weekly Narset Days Undoing concoction and see what he's brought for us. So here we have a traditional sideboard. And uh, yeah, there's some goodies in here. Some more removal. What do you like? Yeah. So we have four Aether Gust, which jumps out. It's like that card's probably going to be pretty good against Mono Green. Not a forever answer, but we have something like the Fairy that's good at taking over. Same with Disdainful Stroke. That's a card that we've seen the Is It Phoenix players really turn to to help fix the Mono Green matchup. And with their deck, they're a little bit more aggressive. So it does hard fix it. But here, still going to be a good upgrade over some of our more conditional removal spells. We're also going to see that extra farewell we mentioned. That can totally come in. And then. We might see a temporary lockdown with us being on the draw as a way to kind of catch all the elves. We might see it again on the play as well, but that's a card that you can see coming in different spots. And honestly, George has a bunch of, you know, cards like Rest in Peace aren't the perfect card in this matchup, but it does stop the Karn loop and turns off things like Old Grove Troll from being these impossible to answer threats and things like Cavalier from generating extra value. So if George wants to, we could have a lot of cyborg cards. Yeah, I mean, un unlikely probably they can board in upwards of 10, but he's got them if he wants them. If So if he has a significant swath of this deck that he doesn't like here, he can exchange it, although it's kind of hard to imagine what that would be. Maybe you don't like so many counters going second. 
Maybe you want to trim away some of the card advantage planeswalkers, but uh, there's certainly a lot of options here. Yeah, we have like four sensor and two make disappear. Sensor are really awkward on the draw, especially mm -hmm. against an elf deck. So I have to imagine that one's going to go at least right on the draw. But also, I want to note something we're looking at George's deck here. George has a main deck disdainful stroke. That is some big respect for this matchup that you're main decking disdainful stroke in your control deck. Still just a one of, but a valuable spot still. Yeah, that popped out to me too as being something that I'm not. I wouldn't expect to see if if I'm Noah's wrestler or if I'm you know sitting down for against George in with whatever deck. I mean, it's like the sample stroke. Yeah, you have you cut. What did you do? Because I feel like normally these deck lists they either run seven counters seems like these these main number of hard counters in the deck and and George has eight. Mm -hmm. It Plus, looks like Portable yeah. Hole died for the sends. Okay, so. Which is, you know, a card that is rarely good against the aggro decks, but is awkward if you're going to try and use Farewell. It's this hard answer to a lot of things. So it might be a situation of, listen, I love Portable Hold, but I'm just not choosing to fight those fight this weekend. And that's how you see those great control players, right, Joe? That are mm -hmm. able to actually build their decks for the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's definitely choices you have to make. Uh, portable Hole, awesome card. Temporary Lockdown, awesome card. Hard to play both of them. Uh, as well as the farewell, like you were saying. So, okay, so players are ready for game number two. Playing for potentially the right to draw into the top eight here. Noah Big looking game. to recover from dropping game one. And no elves, it looks like. And no elves. If you have a bunch of Wolf of Haven, sometimes you can keep these kind of hands, especially because Noah doesn't know that George doesn't have Portable Hole, right? So mm -hmm. Noah might be like, ah, oh, this hand's got a couple of Wolf Willows. I can dodge the Portable Hole. It's kind of better than it looks. Now, we know that's not something that could happen, but if you're Noah Strassel, you're going to make that judgment call in the moment. Yeah, four mana, and he's going to ship it back. And he looks at the top. Uh, <laughs> boy, I don't know about that decision, yeah. but... Mulligan, Mulligan, sure, but look at the top cards. Come on. What are we doing? Yeah, you, you got to make the choices with what you knew. Those top cards shouldn't affect it, you know? You're setting yourself up for failure later in life. <laughs> you know, the grass isn't always greener, Joe. So it's certainly frustration inbound either way. And Georgia Boy looks like he's going to keep the seven. Yep. Okay, and? well, I mean, it, nope, oh. I take that back. No, both players going to take go to six. Yeah, you know, something that Harlan Fear told me a long time ago that we saw earlier today is if you take that long, it's probably a mulligan. Yeah. And I don't know how true that actually is, but in the case of George, it was true here. <laughs> yeah, and Noah is going to immediately go ahead and go down to five. Uh, mm -hmm. Boy, uh, tough things here. And yeah, George obviously had to think about that decision, like you were saying. And now on, on six, knowing that Noah is already on the way to five. Yeah, this yeah. is one spot where I really, the original Mulligan rules, or well, maybe not the original, but ones I played a considerable part of my Magic career, career in where Noah would have to Mulligan as many times as he wanted to, and then George would make a decision after Noah was done, uh, which meant it really lopsided. So at least Dang. he knows where, you know, Noah knows where George is at at this point. Yeah, those greedy thoughts he keeps get a lot bigger when you just sit there and your opponent's mulliganing to six, yeah. down to five, down to four, and you're like, it's one land thought cease, but it is one land thought cease. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a one drop, maybe not the ideal one, but Love Struck Beast. Uh, what Hearts Desire, is that the name of the uh the Bingo. Card? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, in there with a one-one for, for Noah. Mm -hmm. And you know, Lovestruck Beast, kind of good on a low-resource game. If George has just a bunch of lands and not counter spells, this mm -hmm. Lovestruck Beast clock could actually make up for the fact we're so low on uh, cards. Yeah. Yeah, no, with the land, uh, a Karn, Elgrowth Troll, plus that Beast, he's got action here. He's got he's got things to do, at least. Mm -hmm. And running into, you, you spoke about how sensors maybe got boarded out going second. So these cards are more likely to resolve. In fact, if there's no sensor, I don't think Love Struck Beast can be countered here aside from Ether Gust. Yeah, agreed. And it'd be an, an interesting one, Ether Gust. It, it's not even like it would be bad. It would just, you know, what will Noah do? Will, you know, Noah mm -hmm. make more 1 1s or deploy again? <laughs> no, George is thinking about something. Yeah, it's 
maybe it's like a March of Otherworldly Light to hit the token to turn off the Love Struck Beast. I mean, that would work too. Oh, it's a March getting rid of the okay. Wandering Emperor to kill the Love Struck Beast. Okay. All right. That is that is, you know, resource intensive, but it does remove the big threat. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if that means George is like yeah. just yeah, light on lands. Yeah, yeah, I kind of had the same thought, and that is correct. So there's a Supreme Verdict in hand, but he's not there yet. All Girl Troll looks like it's in there. Yeah, and this is part of the strength of the Mono Green deck is its fail rate is large creatures that attack you. Yeah. <laughs> and that is just good enough sometimes in Pioneer. Mm -hmm. Five comes across here and for the first significant attack of the game. And here's an oath looking for a land. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Lair's a great one too. If you know, George ever does draw a verdict, if you're Noah, you know, George is on a bunch of spells. All right. Here's an Onawara into play. These channel lines are so good. They even come to play untapped. It, it is kind of wild how good the Kamigawa channel lands are. They have just like entered every format in a really real way. Mm -hmm. Narset. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's something. I guess it, you know, impulses and, and draws an attack from Old Girl Troll. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe if that didn't show up, Noah could consider ignoring it, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if that was better or worse for George, but it was something. <laughs> yeah, Noah here. Draws Nykthos. Huh. Which does generate one extra mana. <laughs> Noah with a classic no reason looking at my sideboard. Yeah. Oh, this kills me. In, in local PTQs too, I, I watch, I watch, I'm watching friends play. And it's like, as soon as they draw a card, they immediately go to their side where are like, no, you're just screaming to your opponent what you have. <laughs> yeah. We do see that uh, Noah decided to keep the Asikas chariot in the sideboard. So probably just shuffled right on up here for game number two. Yeah, I wonder. Well, maybe, maybe it's just bluff looking at the sideboards from George's perspective. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> so there is, he does have options. He has Karn and he has Storm the Festival. Mm hmm. I, uh, there's been some talk, you know, among Mono Green players, like, what are you supposed to do? There's a camp of you should always storm first, and you, there's a, uh, a big camp of you should always storm last. And kind of the logic being that if you storm last, you get to better inform, kind of like, you know, saving your brainstorms for as long as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you storm first, you have this much bigger chance to actually win the game immediately. Yeah. And so it kind of feels like Noah's having that moment of like, well, I have these Karns already. That makes Karn kind of a bad hit off Storm. Maybe I'm supposed to just play this Karn and get something medium like, you know, Heart of Kieran onto the board that is good against Wrath of God. Mm -hmm. He may also, although I don't necessarily expect to see this, he could also just grow up the Lair of the Hydra and attack. Yeah. Big Lair of the Hydra attack is kind of good. I mean, George would be unable to cast... If Noah sent everything at George, he wouldn't be, have time to cast days in doing. So that would be a way of kind of deleting it from hand. It is the Karn, though. Yeah, and looks like Heart of Kieran was grabbed and pretty reasonable. Also a combo piece, too, Heart of Kieran. So getting mm -hmm. it now lets you, you know, if you're on low resources like Noah is this game, you might be able to set up the combo later. Yeah. Heart of Kieran, one of the cards, I, I, I kind of pains me that these, having played a bunch of Tron in Modern with, with current great creator the original builds ran a lot more artifacts in the sideboard than the later ones where you kind of trim down the important ones and try and preserve some actual sideboard space and i feel like hardy kieran's a card that is rarely relevant and here is the taste of doing into the concession all right i respect that <laughs> yeah you know we saw days and doing cast on stream we love that i mean we didn't see it resolved though <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah no no one may have a counter we don't know george picked up too soon that you know <laughs> George, this leaking information, not seeing Noah's willing to do something in response there. So, but yeah, no, it does kind of stink to not see, you know, more of those cool artifacts in the sideboards of like, you know, the modern and uh, even legacy that where Karn the Good Creator is. That's the, no, I'm saying the reverse. I'm saying we're seeing too many of them. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Saying, I misunderstood what you're saying. Yeah. I had a moment. Oh, no, oh, I'm saying we're seeing too many are in Pioneer. I would love to see, to not see stuff like Heart of Care. I remember, you know, a few months ago when, these decks were um, 
you know, in flux as things were developing. We saw four sky lashers in in the green side boards, and then when the green black, when the splash black existed, then it was like splash for fatal push or splash for you know if you're splashing white, some white cards. And now we don't see that at all anymore. And and I don't know, I I kind of miss that. Sure. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if cards like Obstinate and Bail Off from Brothers War might be able to come yeah. in there as an anti-aggro, anti-Rakdos card. That'd be really cool. I've, I've heard some people talk about playing Nissa's Defeat for the Mirrors, mm -hmm. and so our sideboard cards are only there. And, you know, if you Nissa's Defeat a land with Wolf Willow Haven when you're on the play, uh, that's game, as the kids say. So yeah. <laughs> That would be pretty good. That I mean, that could happen. Yeah, or you could just play it, you know, with an Off an Elf melee because mm -hmm. a lot of the, you know, when you're going in the mirror, where going first is so important, um, that would be a way to take advantage of it. If you don't have, you know, a big threat, you're just like, oh, pick off a land, you're even further ahead. And how are they catching up? It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's really big. And also killing Cure. We mentioned Cure has, I think, a, approximately a billion loyalty. And so having yeah. something that hard kills Cure is nice. All right. So players shuffling up for game three with potential top eight berth on the line. Loser of the match, not guaranteed out, but going to have to be fortunate on tiebreakers in addition to winning the next round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm curious if, you know, George is putting in those sensors or make disappears now that we're on the play. Mm -hmm. Is this thing we're more interested in to actually catch a cure? We saw Noah really respected in game one. So it might just be worth sideboarding, you know, a couple of cards here. We put them to the top. We fan through our deck. We pull them back out again, yeah. just to make Noah have to think about it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more keen on sensor. I think than I am make disappear here, even just because of the, the fail rate of being able to cycle is great. And make disappear certainly could go dead I, fairly early in the game sometimes if green develops well. So mm -hmm. we'll see what George goes chooses to go with. He's got a lot of experience playing with these cards uh, in different formats. I don't know if playing these cards in modern helps very much here, but it probably doesn't hurt. Yeah, it's got to make it at least a little easy on the mechanics of it all. You yeah, know, my yeah, first cost four. I don't have to double check that. You know, yeah. blah blah what you, blah. What do you think about that? Does I don't know that I've really thought about this. Like playing specific cards in different formats. Is that playing, I don't know, Narsa Days and doing in modern, does that age you in playing those cards in Pioneer? Um, it probably helps a little bit on the spots where things are going awry and you kind of need to think about it because you're in similar situations where you can kind of think about it and intuit. So for example, maybe spots where it's like, yeah, I just don't think I'm going to win if I don't cast the Narset now and take the risk on it getting like maybe not bolted, but like lightning struck or attack down, something like that. So it probably does matter. It might also matter with how rigid the cards are, you know, Narset days and doing kind of rigid cards, but if you're doing something like maybe ley line binding, it'd be a lot easier and also, you know, help with checking the mana and stuff. So, mm -hmm. all right, we're underway in game three. I think both players actually kept full hands this time. No, with an elf, a couple elves, you no, know, with lots of things going differently than last game around. Yeah. I think Noah kept a one lander. But did find four off the oath there. All Sorry, right. on three lands. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a, it looked like a Nykthos and a land in an elf, maybe. Yeah, this might be the rare take of forest. Maybe. I mean, you have, you, you can cast your second elf off the first. Oh, maybe there's no other elf. All right, we'll see. I know there's a bunch of Karns in hand. Yeah, there's definitely a bunch of Karns. Noah just taking that. Also, you know, this lets you line up old growth troll if something does happen to one of your elves. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see Heart's Desire. Yeah, and there is another elf in hand, so potentially could deploy a lot here and then risk the temporary lockdown. Yeah, a big card in game one. It looks like uh, Dobin's Veto gonna actually hit the Love Struck Beast. Okay. Well, that certainly, from Noah's perspective, decreases the chance that there is a temporary lockdown in hand. And once again, Georgia Board does not have a third land. Jeez. Yeah, and Noah ripped the third land off the top there. Wow, some good patience on George from the Oath of I might look back and, you know, kick themselves for that one. But there was just a bunch of lands on top, so it was going to probably work out either way. As we okay. see. Karn, great creator. And there's going to be just a stream of threats coming from Noah Strassler. First one meets Disdainful Stroke, and Noah comes across for one. And Noah's probably perfectly satisfied with that. Yeah, Noah, as long as, you know, Noah can keep making land drops and working towards doing double spell stuff, it's going to be fine trading cards with George. Noah knows that, you know, George has got a bunch of gas. And so whenever you play these cards, you know, there's a chance something goes awry with them. Mm -hmm. All right, here is Nykthos currently breaking even. I know it's going to scale up one and go with Cavalier, which is going to meet an Aether Gust. 
putting it on top. Okay, that's one way to go. Another option there is to let it resolve and then throw it on top in response to the trigger. That way, no one gets a land, but the cavalry is actually gone. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, an interesting play. I I think I kind of like what you were suggesting there, but you know, once again, George plays these blue white control decks all mm -hmm. the time, so I'm going right. to assume that George has maybe something like a disdainful stroke and is trying to time walk Noah. He could also just a string of ether gusts here. I believe you said there was four in the sideboard. He could just have mm -hmm. more of them lined up, and at least be able to control Noah's draws. Yeah, and Noah's like, surprise, I have a Karn. All right, absorb that third land for George paying off already. Yeah, and this is the thing we see sometimes, right, Joe, where it's like, if you have a bunch of spells with not many lands, your opponent has more lands than you, you mm -hmm. kind of eventually can start to catch back up again because they can't do as many things just because they have more lands. And so as long right. as you can keep one for winning, you might be able to pull back ahead. Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of a... A, a fan of the theory of if your if your control opponent is missing a land drop, and you I mean you have a couple of elves out, I'm I'm okay with if they have seven cards in hand, I'm okay with just attacking. Mm -hmm. You know, just let them let them discard a card if they if they don't miss a land drop because you're gonna trade for that card either way, whether they discard it or whether you round a spell into it. And if you're not, especially once they have three, I mean you're not gonna resolve anything anyway. Um, yep. I mean there are risks in that, but. Oh, it looks like we cyborg in the bank buster. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we can bring up Reckon or Bank Buster. That's... An interesting one to side in. It it did mean we can't combo if we had had the combo earlier, because you do need Bank Buster to mill your opponent. Um, because it generates the treasure for the Black Butter Cauldron. But mm -hmm. in this situation, it's gonna be a great grindy card. Okay, so here we have the Cavalier coming out again, which is the one that got Ether Gusted before. It resolves this time. Finds, I believe, just one uh, two land, including a lair, which is nice. Yeah, that's a big one, especially you know, you just mentioned you're just going to attack people. Now, you know, George going forward could draw a lot of counter spells that just won't matter because we can dedicate all our man to the lair of the Hydra. Mm -hmm. Does George have any field of ruins? Let's take a check. We have two field of ruins. Okay. Well, we don't have a field of ruin, we don't have land number five. And this is, uh, well, Noah was down a game here. And, and now looking like he's got decent chances of taking down the match. Yeah, well played from Noah Strassler here. Kind of, you know, on low resources, kind of, you know, continuously presenting threats and doing what needs to be done against this control deck. So. All right, Wolf Willow Haven adding some more mana generation with the Nykthos here. Should be seven devotion. Options available. Here is Storm the Festival. Another Absorb. I don't think Noah's going to mind that too much. He's going to still get a huge attack in. Yeah, that's, you know, good news, bad news for uh, Noah. And are we going to cast... Bankbuster cost... Yeah, okay, I was going to say. I thought it cost two. Yeah, Bankbuster starts the charge counter and removes them. Mm-hmm. So it can be a big attack here. It could also be just attack for five and then an activation. Yeah. Feels okay. like, yeah, just kind of want to respect something like Supreme Verdict probably by doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. No, I like this. Having having the card draw flowing, also storm the festival in the graveyard. George not anywhere near farewell yet. Yeah. And, you know, if we do Verdict... We're going to get that uh, Storm the Festival put on top of our deck if we want it, thanks to the uh, Cavalier's Die ability. Mm -hmm. Looks like George has some use for the mana. Maybe it's an, a Wandering Emperor to exile the Cavalier. Okay. I mean, that would be fine. That yeah. would be good. Yeah. I mean, Noah is empty handed now, I believe. Yeah, it's like, Ooh. oh, we're casting Memory Deluge. Okay. Are we? This is George's main phase, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Because we uh, absorbed last turn. Yeah. Well, you got to do what you got to do, but this is 
Certainly can't feel good for George DeBoer. And does he still miss a land drop? Oh, my gosh. That's wild. Also, I think George is dead if Noah draws a land. Well, he's certainly still not at 19. Yeah. I believe he's at 14. I agree with the 14. And we have seven devotion, which means the lair rumbles in for eight if we use the lands. That's 13, 14, 15, uh, 16, 17 if we crew with the bank buster. How about another Nikonos? Is that enough? Uh, that's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't, if, if George somehow was at 19, it's not going to be enough now. Is Noah Strassler getting it done here, it looks like. No solitudes in this format. No, no, that, that does make a big difference, doesn't it? March of Other Really Light does cost one mana at least. All right, so yep. here's an elf that's free. They're actually net a mana with double Nykthos activation. Yep. So that should be eight. Yeah. Up Going to 14. To motions here. George knows where this leads. Oh, maybe no old flashback storm the storm the festival and whiff. There's a chance, right? Yeah, some people are addicted to value. They'd rather lose drawing cards than win. And I can respect that. No. And <laughs> there it is. Noah Stressler will defeat George Abor, who shows off that he did in fact have March of Other Otherworldly Light. He just didn't find a land off mm -hmm. of the memory delusion. That's certainly disappoint disappointing. But you move on. I mean, yep. you can't control everything. Yeah, you, you know, as much as you might try, you know, George Bohr every weekend out here with the control decks. But uh, yeah, sometimes these things do just happen. And you have to take sometimes some risky keeps on mulligans like that, especially when your opponent mulligans to five, like mm -hmm. Noah did. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, game two, Noah able to recover off of five. Impressive work was kind of just the raggedy beatdown at the beginning here. And then game three, the players with, uh, I believe, full hands in game three. And it was just, well, you, you mold a six, you miss your third land up. Then you keep seven. You miss your third land up again. You have counters. You we obviously saw Ether Gust, a shameful stroke, a couple of absorbs. There's no reason why you wouldn't think my deck probably has 25, 26 land with some cyclers. I'll hit the third one and I'll be okay. And just doesn't always work out. Yeah, hundred percent. And it kind of shows off too. Once again, the strength of the mono green deck. We we're talking about this earlier today, Joe. But it's a mono green kind of ramp deck that has a lot of card advantage and a lot of card selection. In. You know, things like Oath and Cavalier and mm -hmm. Storm the Festivals. You mulligan low, but you actually just pull way back in a way that we wouldn't see from ramp decks of old. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oath of Nissa in particular is a nice one. I mean, be able to find a threat or or your second line. I believe we saw this game in game three. Noah kept a one line hand, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 Oath uh, pulls it together. Yeah. So we're moving through the day here. Thanks for being with us. I just joined in, but the stream's been going all weekend long. We're playing Pioneer 5K here at Nerd Rage in, um, we're, we're in Fort Wayne. Yeah, we're in Fort Wayne, mm -hmm. Indiana. So if you're enjoying this show, we appreciate you being here. Follow along, get notifications of the next event, which is in a couple weeks, Thanksgiving weekend, I believe. Uh, Chicago. Which is, yeah, the first uh, Nerd Rage Pioneer 10K, as you can see there. Modern 5K on Sunday. So plan on showing up or plan on watching. If you're, you know, gathered together with family for the Thanksgiving weekend and you really don't like your family, just hole up in the bathroom or in the, around the corner and, you know, pull up the stream on your phone. You'll be good. Make sure to click that follow button. That way you don't miss when it goes live and you can leave from the Thanksgiving dinner table. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is Saturday and Sunday. Thanksgiving day. Yeah. You can watch the replay of this week's stream or any other stream either on Twitch or on our YouTube channel. Uh, but we will be live in a couple weeks on Saturday for another Pioneer 10K. So if you're, is, what's your chosen format? If you, if you have to play an event that matters to you tomorrow, what format do you want it to be? All right, we'll, we'll scratch that for a moment. We are ready for the interview. So let's go ahead and bring in our guest. Noah, how are you doing? Uh... We don't hear Noah yet. Let's go ahead and see if we can get his headset turned on. I'll just sign. There we go. Nice. We are good. Can nice. you hear me? All right. Yeah, bet. Bet. All right. So uh, congratulations on winning that one. That was. Uh, Thank you. I mean, it has to be a, a little discouraging being down a game and mulling to five. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he just got really unlucky, honestly. Like, he had the setup where he has a lot of counter spells, two lands was his keep there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, uh, he just didn't find the lands. He just got blue whited, honestly. Like, 
I mean, sure, you could say he was yeah. unlucky, but you're also yeah. unlucky to mold a five. So, I mean, it, you know, yeah, it's, but it's it's that's just kind of mono green, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I threw away a seven that was three forests, uh, Nykthos, Kiora, Boat, and the Cavalier. And it's like, I, I don't really know if you're supposed to keep those on the drawer or not. Um, I figured just the elf is so good against uh, blue white, it's really hard for them to set up their mana. Like, their stuff is not really efficient, especially if they are leaning on stuff like Sensor, which Elf is really strong against. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I feel like I played well. Um, I made the right plays. Uh, I am not very happy uh, with Mono Green in the format. I think they should uh, ban something. This is probably the least fun I've had playing Magic, I'm going to be honest. Uh, not to be a Debbie Downer, but uh, at Watsy, please uh, do something. So. All right, making your statement known there. Uh, you know, despite you know maybe not having the most fun, you played really well in game uh, two there, figuring out how to. Na- I'm sorry, game one there with navigating your spells. Now you ultimately did mm-hmm. still end up losing, having too much. But yeah, how was that kind of working through those counters? Oh my gosh! Well, I, I felt so. I thought I had lost as soon as he played the um, uh, the temporary lockdown, if that's what it's called, because mm-hmm. I was I haven't seen a lot of blue white lists playing that. Um, but when I drew the Besaju, I thought I had a chance. Um, it, it was just too late, though. Like he, had, w- when they set up to ferry like that, it's just they get so many cards. And even though the cards don't really do anything, like I was joking with him the whole time. I was like, "Yeah, you're drawing, you know, twenty cards, but like only three of them do something, you know." <laughs> but it's it's uh, it's just a little too late, you know, kind of thing. So we we're talking a little bit about um, we're kind of joking as we often do when these these green decks go sideboarding and they don't do anything. But you actually mm-hmm. did sideboard a little bit. So you want to walk us through like the decision making on boarding in the Bankbuster there? Yeah. So I don't really know, and, and I don't I don't want to speak with confidence uh, as mm-hmm. if I know that that's correct or not. Uh, I did have the feeling. So I have a lot of you know my my board is just fifteen wish targets. Uh, I'm not playing any sort of ferocious Hydra or uh, second Sky Sovereign or anything like that. I just felt like the way that the blue white decks are set up, uh, having some sort of get under their counter magic card is, is something that could really, really benefit me. So I decided to board in the Bank Buster. Um, it could be wrong. I know it's, you know, it can be important for comboing and stuff, but I figured it's still in the deck. I'll, I can get to it if it comes down to that. And uh, usually you can just kill them with a big layer or something so mm-hmm. I, I felt like it was worth the the points not having it to combo um i think in the future i will like try boarding some stuff in i know against like mono white humans you can maybe board in like a chariot if you're on the draw uh, even though that's a good target to get sometimes you're just too slow you know so i would definitely consider like looking into sideboarding even though you literally are the no sideboard guide deck so <laughs> Well, you know, outside of Magic, you know, how's your NRG weekend been? Did you play the team event yesterday? You've been having fun with your friends? No, I actually, uh, I actually drove down just for Pioneer. Um, I, I, you know, even though I'm saying like, oh, this is the least fun I've had playing Magic, it's, it's still a good time. It's great to see, you know, good friends. Uh, I walked in the door and I saw like four, four or five people that I haven't seen in two years, and it was great to see them. You know, um, I'm just trying to get some paper reps in for Atlanta. Uh, hopefully, you know, play some more pro tours and enjoy what competitive magic is now. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so speaking of Atlanta, then uh, a couple weeks away, we've had the full spoiler out now. Uh, I assume you're excited about some of the cards from Mono Green, if that's still your deck. Oh man. I mean, I wouldn't, <sighs> my disdain for Mono Green uh, <laughs> goes deep. Does uh, it go deep enough that you wouldn't play the deck? Uh, well, I'm here playing the deck. So, yeah. uh, I, I figured I had to run it one time um, just to see. I've been trying my, my hardest to not play Mono Green. I've always, you know, tried to play the best deck, try to do the best, you know. Uh, I think I can play a lot of different strategies. Uh, I think that with these new cards, Mono Green gets uh, even better. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I know... I don't know. The the eight drops good. Even that um uh there's like a, a card in jump start that like untaps a land now mm-hmm. too. It's just yeah. I, I feel like Wizards is like, oh, how do we make mono green worse? Like, let's make it so they have more than fifteen good artifacts to get. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, this is how we'll make it worse. 
make it so everybody else feels you know i, I don't i don't know there there are definitely some hitters in this new set um i i am very excited about some of the other cards uh that are getting printed though not specifically for mono green but i think the shade fills a lot of holes in red black uh sure. that deck uh when i played in i've been playing a lot of red black uh losing a lot to mono green which is why i'm playing mono green but uh i feel like the shade fills a lot of holes in that deck uh you're able to get more aggressive against these go big decks that are trying to you know battle with mono green and then also that uh exile effect is lets you not get bodied by uh the troll right. the troll bodies you a lot so sure all right no stressor well versed in the format and we'll wish you luck in atlanta as well as the rest of the day thanks for speaking awesome. with us. yeah thank you i appreciate it yeah all right and uh, yeah, he may uh, he may just like his deck, but he's clearly put some thought into it and and how he wants it to play. Yeah, sometimes being a competitive Magic player and when to play the Pro Tours in the bunch, like Noah just said there, is just buckling up. And I'm sure you've been there too, Joe, where it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, this isn't the most fun, but the other Pro Tours are going to be really fun. So I'm going to do everything <laughs> I can to get back to that next one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, we're going to step away. It sounds like we've got a few minutes left before round seven begins. So uh, stick around and Mason and I will be right back with round seven. <laughs> 